Let's go. Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Vincent Green. And I'm your host, Ron John Tui. And this is Invasion of the Poly Snatchers. Let's get to it, motherfuckers. All right, no. Look, we've done we've done three podcasts and we've made the same joke at the start of the world. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. Yeah. Just like this franchise, we lack a little bit of originality. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, no, so this is the third part of our franchise Friday is focused around the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We already talked about Texas Chainsaw Massacre one through four in part one, and in part two we talked about the uh, Jessica Biel star and. Uh, the remake from 2003 and the prequel 2006 and now we're going to talk about all the attempted reboots of this franchise over the past uh, 10 years or so starting off with texas chainsaw 3d starring Alex- uh, alexandria daddario and then we're going to talk a little bit about letterface which is another prequel and then we're going to talk about the latest installment the uh, netflix med uh, directed by fede alvarez kind of requel um that well, just i could do that one quite quickly <laughs> so no let's talk about i want to talk about these three movies kind of together because they're all attempts of revitalizing the franchise because it, it there's yes. there was a case of from 1994 was part four and then it was another nine years before we saw another one something we spoke about in part one is this franchise has an issue of stalling at times and sometimes there's quite a long time in between installments so in this well, the years between the first two exactly like, I mean, yeah. they're right there yeah yeah, which is kind of uncommon in terms of popular horror franchises. Of course, yeah, yeah. So um, Texas Chainsaw 3D came out, what, you said 2013, I think you mentioned earlier on. 13, it? yeah. And Letterface came out in 2017, I think. And then the next one just came out like last month. So in the last uh, nine years, we've seen three attempts uh, rebooting this franchise. And what do you think um, of the three that was the most successful? I think the one that we're probably going to jump into first, and that would be the Texas 3D, despite the fact that it's not a great film by any stretch of the imagination. At least it tried to retell the story from a different angle. Um, Leatherface, which I'm not going to shit on, actually think is like a really good movie. One of the best movies, the franchise was just the, the, the story of Leatherface. Like how he went from being just a boy to being, you know, horribly disfigured to wearing a mask and all this kind of stuff. And uh, the newest one, which was just, I, I just think bad, just badly executed start to finish. So I think if I'm going to, if I'm going to throw in one, it's definitely um, Alexandria Daddario's um, uh, film because it, it tried, it, it like I, I liked how it started from the day after everything was supposed to have gone down yeah. in the 70s. Although Alexander Daddario is still way too young. <laughs> I don't really get that. The timeline makes absolutely no sense. She's a very, it's supposed to be 2013 or whatever. And she's a very young woman. Yeah. Yeah. She would have been like in her forties. or something. She would have to have been in her forties at least. Like, and I don't think she's 40 now, even almost yeah. 10 years later. Mm. But uh, I, I, I uh, yeah, this, this, this tried to do something. I thought I love the, I love when they give you you know, I love when they flirt with something for so long, and but you never get to see it. And then they finally, you know, they stop teasing and then they reveal. And that was like what would have gone down in that house just after the Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing. Yeah. If they didn't, uh, so they kind of retold that story. And it wasn't like they had Sally originally go like catatonic and be unable to speak. And that's why, you no, know, you know, they never found Letterface. But this one, they show up, the town, the town shows up and they execute everybody in the house. Yeah, and they burn it to the ground. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) Uh, no way around the good book. Yeah, yeah. uh, Sometimes there's a posse needed. Is all I'm saying. Sometimes a posse is needed. Yeah, (laughs) pack a pack of posses is all they are. But uh, I do, I I do think that that this at least tried something. Now I do. I think the execution left a lot to be admired. A lot Mm. to be admired. But I do think that they actually tried something and. Uh, they were like, this didn't work, this didn't work, this didn't work. And now we're talking from like 1974 to 2006. Uh, and he was like, well, I can't, I, I'm not going to do this because we've already done it or this or this. So what if we do this? And that, a little bit of originality, I will give credit to. Again, yeah. I could go after the execution, but it did have a little bit of an original attempt. It was a retelling. It was different. It was a girl that grows up to find out she's adopted uh, because she was found in the arms of her mother, who would have been a part of the the, the family, the and um, the Sawyers, and then she was taken in and raised, and now she's just finding out as her grandmother died that she's like the last surviving relative, mm. and um, 
she gets a house and it looks like everything's like looking up and I'm like, okay, that has not been done in any of the previous six films or whatever it was at this point. Uh, So I I was all for it. I was impressed at that Mm. point. Uh, it was a little bit formulaic in its own way, but no, at least I thought it was a bit of original. What about you? Yeah, no. Um, of the three, of the three, which one do you think did the, the best? Ch- Your exact same question. I did too. Um, shit, I hate when someone turns my own words against me. Um, <laughs> it's actually I'm playing chess against myself. Uh, so, <laughs> the, uh, why are you coming after me for, Mister Green? Uh, just answer the goddamn <laughs> question, Vincent. Uh, why would you want me to answer the question? I said, just answer the question. <laughs> what you want the truth? I, yeah, I'm after I the just, truth. You want the truth? Yeah, I want the truth. You can't handle the truth, and that's how it would play out. You know, something like. That. But um, so what was the question? Lines, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you were just saying what, well, like, of the kind of attempts. Yeah. to i'm paraphrasing now but the attempts to revamp or rejuvenate mm. or bring this gener- this um this franchise back from the dead for the umpteen time which yeah. of these three films you think did the best yeah um uh, job of it first of all of all the horror franchises i think this one even though it has more installments than nightmare on m street might have more meat on the bone in terms of storytelling ability going into the future um because uh which is unfortunate actually saying that now because ne- I know Netflix are going to have more, but like having a requel um, and incorporating the original timeline um, from a movie that is almost 50 years old creates so little longevity in the future of your franchise. And it made no sense to me to go that route. So in 2003, uh, it, it, like to have a requel as well at that time made, makes more sense because they're like it's 10 years the big difference in terms of someone's physical capabilities and like so both of them are equals um and both of them try to incorporate the same time uh, the same timeline but i think uh alexandria daddario's one might have made more sense if it was set closer to the original like they could have had it set in the 90s um and it that, went... that was the thing that just like yeah. uh, there she can't be born in 1974 and be 20 in 2010. Yeah. It's a very simple thing to, to expect from a franchise. Yeah. Is that we, we can't have, and she's reading, like, she's actually reading, at one point, she's reading the microphage, you know, and, and, and all these, these, like, and all the newspapers and stuff from back in the day. Yeah. And she's like, 1974, like, blah, blah, blah. She would have been like, you know, three months old. Yeah. In, in, back then, in August of that year, like, and you're like, no. No, <laughs> three months old in August of 1984. Maybe yeah, like, yeah. no, of course, just, just 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 silliness and unnecessary. And and like you said, there's no there's no reason it couldn't have been based in 2000. There's just yeah. no reason at all. Yeah. So like I I just think um both of them try to tell similar stories or both of them try to incorporate the uh, um the original in how they told their stories. I just think Alexia uh, Alexandria Daddario's one is actually probably did a better job. Because it actually made more sense narratively, and it kind of fitted in better. Like even though the it was different as well. Like because like even though I, I kind of thought it was a bit stupid, like having her be she could have even just been that daughter, the daughter of that kid. She could have just been a like the grandkid. You know what I mean? Like so that would have even yeah. made more sense. Just the timeline thing, the way they incorporated her. Age, she's thirty five now, by the way. Yeah, like, like she's thirty five now, and she and she looks you know incredible. Like you know what I mean? So. I just yeah. have to put that out there. Um, but, but yeah, like, well, she's a beautiful. I mean, she's actually almost like unbelievable that yeah, she's actually that beautiful. But yeah, but uh, yeah, this in this she was just incredible. But she's thirty five now, which means she would have been born in a yeah. So she's about fourteen years too young for yeah. what they were going. For, exactly. You know? that's, yes, that's, that's it. Probably it probably would have made more sense much. for her to be the daughter of the baby that survived that killing or that. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like so. I do not. So apart from the confusing aspects of Texas Chainsaw 3D, I think it did a better job at doing at making a requel than the Netflix one. So of the three movies, the, the one that's different in how it tried to tell the story was the 2017 Letterface. And I think it's the best out of the three of them, even though it doesn't really move on the franchise because it's a prequel. Um, it does a good job of expanding the mythos around Netherface. And I think it was very similar in tone to the 2003 and 2006 movies. And I think that's where that tone of that franchise needs to remain. 
And I think with the, two, the 2022 movie, even though, as we talked about before, went on air, it has probably the most massacring by a chainsaw of all of them. And it really earned its name that way. I just think that the gore was over the top. It was cartoonish, like where he snaps the guy's wrist and he stabs him in his own neck. Which is, uh, that's the kind of thing you'd say. Oh, but I never put it in the story. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, that oh, thing. yeah, no, that's uh, that's that. Like, there's you know, you're, you're giving the presentation to the money bags are going to finance your film and you panic. Yeah, and he's like, Yeah, but then he'd like break his wrist, right? And the bones would be sticking out. Yeah, he'd take those bones and stab him in his own neck with them. Yeah, get yeah. by your own bones. Yeah, okay, um, and then I, just like you know, <laughs> yeah, I just think like this obsession with making, um. The, the Jason Voorhees S killer at the moment, like with Michael Myers, um, and now with Leatherface, and like the talk on that point is has there ever been a more blatant ripoff of a pre existing movie than the current uh Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie and how it ripped off how Halloween H40 tried to tell its story with Laurie Schrode and how she survived Michael Myers and all this jazz, how she came back gun toting, and the way they did this, the one that got away, and they did the exact same thing with the Sally. Um, what's her surname? Harbinger or some shit like that from the original and I had her come back she's like a Texas Ranger and like what did you think of the that aspect of it like you know I just thought it was oh. the most blatant rip off I've seen in a long time you really have to oh god <laughs> I have to address I have to address Jody's like I have to address Jamie Lee Curtis in uh, the fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre and go, <laughs> oh my god yeah it was, it was it was abysmal man it was like I mean that's you know what it is it's that it's in such a bad movie you know, yeah. when something's like so cool, yeah, like so cool because Sally is obviously not the little girl she was, yeah, she's not the delicate little girl who was trying to, you know, like screaming and screaming and trying yeah. to escape. And she, she, you know, thought she, 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 she obviously all of that rage could culminate into something really kick ass. But in this, it was just abysmal. She just shows up and gets good, and <laughs> 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 but she, like, everybody. This this chainsaw was magical. It could it could inflict mortal wounds that you don't uh, die of, or cut through you like a hot knife through butter. Yeah, and uh, in between. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah. Like, see where he actually chainsaw in the belly and lift you up <laughs> so, that you're, so that gravity is making you go through the chainsaw. Yeah, uh, your heart, your lungs, man, your liver, and your stomach is all destroyed instantly. Like it's dragged into it, man. It's, you it's, die. Aside from the insanity of the kills in the new Netflix movie, what did you make of the fact that? he was staying in an orphanage. Like, what age was he when he went into the orphanage? Because he's a fully grown fucking dude in the original. He's like 30 in the original. <laughs> yeah, you, know? Like, you know what I mean? Like, the timelines in these movies, like, make no sense. Like, they constantly do requels, but yet they're like, oh, let's incorporate the original by saying it's linked to it. But let's not bring it to the fact that it's like 50 years ago. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I just think like, as, as something I talked about uh, fucking a few times now, if you keep incorporating these originals, the further and further and further away that we get in terms of time from those originals, you're actually decreasing the believability of these characters as a threat. Michael Myers is in his 60s. Leatherface is in his 60s. Like, you know what I mean? Maybe even older because he was like, supposed to be at least 20, 50 years ago. So he's in his 70s. Yeah. So like when you look at like, like the vitality of these characters going forward. Like if you want to fucking really create longevity with these franchises and keep milking these fucking tit, these kind of like, like all the time, keep milking that fucking tit. Like you're going to have to do a proper reboot and like literally do what they did in 2003 and 2006. They probably, as I said to you in the last episode, they made a few decisions that kind of paint themselves into a corner, but they had the right idea. You go back to the original time is set back in the 70s so you can get all those elements and then you can fucking reintroduce all these characters and have a, a new letter face at 20 or 30 years old so you can make four or five movies on the back of it. That's the only way you're going to do it because like you can't have like another five fucking text chase and masters when the first one letter face is 70 odd years old. Like what the fuck? Like, you know, I just think it's so stupid and so short sighted that we keep reincorporating these movies because like Halloween had some, some some success. So Candyman did it. Now Leatherface is doing it. Or, sorry, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is doing it. And I just think it's the wrong way to go if you want to keep milking these kind of franchises because you're not creating any longevity if your fucking main antagonist is 70 years old in the first installment. And you just like it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The one thing that you're not allowed to escape is Leatherface. Mm. You know, and, and and rightfully so, because I mean, you know, it's a hellraiser without 
pinhead or, or what have you. It just, it's just not going to, it's a Friday the 13th. And I know, yes, I know that the first Friday the 13th didn't have Jason Voorhees, but um, mm. uh, yeah, of course we want it. We want it, but at the same, I, I don't know, especially it's fiction. You can, you're allowed to do anything you like with the timeline. Yeah. They could have got, they could have gone there in the year 2000. Yeah. And at least it would have made some sense. It would have been Mod- 22 years ago. Modernize the story. Modernize the story. It's simple as that. <laughs> And they didn't do any of that. And uh, they just, and you know, he was, oh. I will say that we said this before we went live, and that is that this Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a lot of people being killed by a chainsaw. Not yeah. lump hammers, not, you know, not meat hooks, yeah. not strangled chainsaws. Yeah. Uh, I will give it that. A magic, 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 mm-hmm. magic chainsaw. A chainsaw that was seemingly boarded up in a wall for 50... Like, like this tells me that, that he went to the orphanage after the events of the fucking first movie. So, like, this old woman just, like, has an orphanage full of young children and she just takes in this 30-year-old dude and obviously brought a chainsaw with him because he had it and he put it in the wall. Like, when yeah. did he put that chainsaw in the wall? Like... I'll put this chainsaw <laughs> on the wall for later. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, like, I don't get it. Like, so, like, and what age is that woman? She must have been, like, 900 years old. If she's, like, yeah, you know what I mean? And then she dies of, like, shock from seeing, like, kids or something. She's uh, like, oh, uh, no, a minority. And she just dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's how racist they were. Just yeah. the, the, just seeing a minority was enough Man, to do it. I had to laugh, though, because you're like, oh, you're going to come in and gentrify our neighborhood. And I look at the grave of the neighborhood, and it looks like a wasteland. It's like, I'm like, yeah. dude, if I was you, maybe be a bit welcoming of some kind of investment, because you're living in a literal wasteland. <laughs> like, you know oh, I mean? yeah, yeah. It wasn't one of those, like, uh, mom and pop shops that yeah. got the shit down to set up. All. Like, there was nothing at all. Yeah. Like nothing, and I love like the fact that they go to the shithole. And I mean, it's a shithole. I'm shit sorry, hole. but there's nothing yeah. there. There's not even a well. Yeah, and they see a, a torn up Confederate flag, and you might like, I have to get rid of that. We got buyers coming in, and don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's a bad look, but the entire place is a bad look. <laughs> yeah, it looks bad. Yeah, I think yeah, I think they'll figure out that you didn't put up that Confederate flag, <laughs> and that's probably true as well. And it's not like yeah, it's not like oh my god, we have such a prestigious thing here, but that one little eyesore. No, yeah. the entire place. Oh my god, um, I will say that the that the, the, the deaths in it were the most. Uh, you yeah. know, it it was so over the top, but it was trying to be all um, fun deaths though. You enjoyed them. Ah, they were fun. Yeah, the geez, giggly they deaths. They're so over the top that you laugh at them more than be horrified at them. Oh god! You know and I, mean? I just thought, yeah, even at the the like, I mean, even the end of this film where the sister gets dragged out of the car and then she screams, and she gets the <laughs> but like, but like it was like, eh. yeah, and, then, that, and then and then you want the self driving like Prius or something. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like a wiki wacky <laughs> uh, waving a flavor to her arms, man. Do that guy? Like, he's like, ah! I love the fact she doesn't even try to protect herself. She just puts her hands down by your side and goes, yeah. ah, and then the head just comes <laughs> off like, blah. <laughs> yeah, just, it would have been amazing if she kept screaming. <laughs> it would have been incredible if she could. But uh, again, we have to talk about like when like Leatherface gets chopped up the belly and stuff with the chainsaw and falls into the water and then jumps out of it. <laughs> Man, this film makes no sense. Like none. No, like out of the three. At movies, no point does this film make sense. Yeah, out of the three movies like that we're talking about that try to revamp this franchise over the past ten years or so, this is the one that made the least amount of sense. Like, like, like when you get Fede Alvarez who did such a good job with uh, Evil Dead in 2013 when he rebooted that. Like that is a fucking excellent reboot. It's up there. You can say it for without doubt. It's one of the best ways of revitalizing the franchise and putting in a completely different tone of the originals, but somehow still capturing a similar kind of uh, kind of like feel of the originals in the terms of the body horror and the gore that it implemented, even though it was way higher level. That like I thought he was going to do a really excellent movie. Like you know, I was really really looking forward to this, but I still think the standard bear of the all the installments is the ones from 2003 and 2006 that they really showed the way and nobody's picked up in the same way since I think Leatherface came the closest to it and how it told the story and the style and the visual way it did and all this kind of shit but like I think the uh, Alexandria Daddario one from 2013 told a better version of this story than the 2022 did like so the requel they did even though it's a very different story they kind of try to do the requel um in 2022 i just think 2013 is a 
better way to do a requel than the 2022 one because the 2022 one everything was very ancillary and uh, whereas theirs they actually gave her a direct contact with the sires even though she was like 15 years too young she should have been a granddaughter or the daughter of the baby like instead of just actually being the baby but who might exactly judge? I think, you know, the newest one, I would think, it to me, it looked like it was made by Ralph Macchio from <laughs> um, Parks and Recreation. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> no, no, just yeah. like, we're going to make... But, like, why, have you got a storyline? No, but I've just ordered 5,000 gallons of blood. Yeah. <laughs> just like, and that's how we're going to make the best one. This was just a clusterfuck. The characters were complete. Like, Leatherface, I have to say, now, that was a story. Yeah, that was a story, but but like I don't think it tried to revamp it. I think it just tried to exist on its own, build on it. Like, or, or, and if you wanted to build on it, I think you could. That's no yeah. problem. You go ahead, build on it. But this was very much so the story of Leatherface. Yeah, I think the, I, a sequel to 2017's Leatherface story way to go would have been. Oh, absolutely! It was a fantastic way to introduce him. But it was a fantastic way to introduce him, and the characters, like they had some absolute phenomenal talent in it. And I thought him in the institution and escaping. And of course, they had the red herring of the big kind of mentally yeah. disabled guy that you thought was, you know, going to be. And Sheila, I couldn't remember. I mean, like Sheila's head like a sieve. I could yeah. show Sheila the same film every yeah. 11 days and we'd be fine. That'd be amazing. But, uh, but she even said, you yeah, know, the big guy's not let her head face, is he? Yeah. <laughs> He's not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I like that too, because they try different things, like, you know, and I think you could have easily built on it instead of constantly, like, this is something that annoys me. Like, the stories are already there, like, the characters are already built. You can just work off them instead of constantly reboot, requels, and revamps and all this shit. Because 2017 is not that long ago. Like, so five years ago, we had a pretty decent movie that set up a lot of things. You could just pick that back up, maybe cast a different guy's letter face because that guy was a bit small to be letter face, you know what I mean? Because he's supposed to be young and just have him grow up and cast a new guy based 10 years later and you could have just had it set in the same time period and then bam smack you have a franchise that you can build on again and the, like you know what i mean because as we spoke about it's oftentimes just many years between the texas chase and massacre movies this is the closest now that we've had tr- three installments since three and four so you know what i mean so like so like or two three and four because i think they came in like an eight-year period or something wasn't it two three and four so and these yeah. three came in like a nine year period. So like I think there's really there's a lot of attempts out there now to revitalize this franchise. I just think that they could have either built off the back of the Alexandra Daddario one, or they could have built off the back of 2017 another face instead of trying to reboot it again and have it be a requel to the original and have another face be 70 something years old it makes no sense to me. Like I just think it was such a blatant rip off of Halloween that whatever Halloween did, they were just gonna do it themselves, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 when you look at the three of them, you can see three completely different directions that films are going for. You couldn't even say that mm. like they tried something close. Like like Alexandra Daddario was supposed to be the new head of the family, yeah. and it's her like going there, a completely normal, inconspicuous kind of girl, even though she's most beautiful girl you might ever lay your eyes on yeah. but uh she and then kind of l- learning about her heritage and accepting her place and then letterface i have to say again it's kind of a standalone but i thought it was an excellent movie and then there was just this kind of new one where they thought that blood blood is storytelling yeah <laughs> yeah like the thing and, is, uh, you could have actually incorporated both the movies you just spoke about for all the reasons that she took the she took the head of the family um, she now is like Leatherface's uh, controller, and then we had the re uh, the prequel where you could have actually said, okay, this is actually Leatherface's backstory. We're going to incorporate both those two movies, uh, cast Alexandra Daddario again, and then just work from those two movies as, as if they're one story. Yeah, and now you're making like the third movie. You know what I mean? You could literally start go. We're just going to cast her again. She controls Leatherface because she's so beautiful. She can lure people in. And like they're fucking people up, like you know what I mean? That would have made sense. But it was the Bart Mark, wasn't it? Wasn't it the Bart Mark that like when she's chained up and uh Scott Eastwood has ripped open her shirt? <laughs> Scott Eastwood. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh he sees a little Bart Mark on her chest, like a spiral. It looked like it could have been ringworm or something. And, um, <laughs> you got uh, the ringy? You got the ringy too, do you? <laughs> still would. But uh yeah, but uh <laughs> but uh he he doesn't kill her then um 
I don't know that 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 one was if you had to if you had to build on something, you'd build on that because that the newest one. No, I suppose I, I take back what I said. I think Letterface could have tied into the 2013 one, like you said, because you have how he came to be, and then you could have had that that one in 2013 be where he is exactly. and what's going on with him because it was set up in such a way where the cop turned a blind eye because the corrupt mayor to him was a bigger problem. Mm. So when the corrupt mayor gets falls into the that mincer and is completely killed off. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, well, that's actually the biggest headache I I have because this guy could probably be hidden away for another 20 years, if not the rest of his life. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I do, I, I, I do think that I honest to God, I, f- I feel so bad for these two films that we're talking about them in the same company as the most recent one. Cause the <laughs> most recent one was just fucking awful. Yeah, like I, I, I was. It's like it's a weird thing with Texas Chainsaw Massacre that it has this habit um, since two thousand three that it goes uh, remake, prequel, uh, remake, uh, like reboot, prequel, reboot. So it's like so sorry. So it's reboot, prequel, reboot, prequel, reboot, and that. So the next one, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, <laughs> maybe a prequel because that's the fucking form it's taken since 2003, where it's reboot, re, uh, prequel, reboot, prequel, reboot. So it's weird that, like, of all the franchises, that it that's it's gone that way. And, like, it kind of shows that, like, fucking horror in a lot of ways, like, when you're trying to revitalize these franchises, they've kind of run out of ideas and how to revitalize them. So, like, w- and why not instead of, like, constantly trying to remake reboot why not just take what's already there and just build on it like, that's what just annoys me because like the two movies we were just speaking about like Leatherface that's a solid movie uh, Alexandria Daddario she's a solid fucking backbone to build a movie off of like and you can have her as a villain this turn like you don't get to see that a lot where you have a final girl turn into a villain and like, I think that would have been an interesting thing you could have played with like and you could have recast her you said she's only 35 years old now you could build the franchise on the back of her and Leatherface. We talked about the manic mouthpiece. She could be the new manic mouthpiece, but also be like a honey trap where she's luring people in and that's a new element. And she's like, like kind of like as if the evilness within her um, is manifested through Leatherface. And even though she looks so beautiful on the outside, the true fucking horrificness is in her. Leatherface is like the physical manifestation of, and you could play with that. And the fact that she's still so young and like she could like, build a franchise on her and that makes no sense to me they're just like okay so the next one's going to be probably a whole new cast um if they don't do a prequel they're going to have a sequel to this next one uh, the one that just did it's going to be a whole new group of people they're just going to be there for fodder like that makes no sense to me like if you want to build a franchise build the mythos up and you have two movies that kind of work the standalones but also you can incorporate both their storylines quite easily and build another one off it. and they just don't do that so that's what annoys me about the new one that instead of constantly fucking rebooting these franchises, all they need to do is look at what's there and what's usable and actually use that. And Alexandria Daddario is so young still that you could have easily built the next three movies on the back of her as like a villain and let her face be her muscle, you know? Yeah, absolutely. But I, maybe it was just so badly received or something. And it was obviously, it was Letterface 3D. And do you remember there was a stage where you used to have to go to the cinema and you used to have to buy like a 2D or a 3D ticket? Yeah. And we thought that this was going, what happened? I thought that this was going to be the thing. I even remember it got, so, by the time the third Batman of the Christian Bale, sorry, uh, Christopher Nolan yeah. um, a series had come out uh that that was like the first time in a while that i'd gone to the cinema and there was only 2d tickets available yeah because 3d had was just everything but the 3d films now everyone just feels like was kind of a mistake or a phase yeah. like films that came out like 3d are considered kind of like uh you know a little bit cheesy or corny nobody kind of really wants to associate with them it's all about i don't know high, i don't really high, higher resolution now isn't it yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened to them. That was very much a phase, man, and I, I was sure that it wasn't. I yeah. have to admit, for there was like a three year period there where it was very much so not a phase. The three D films. Yeah, I've seen a good few films in three D there in the space of a few years. Like I see Thor, Men in Black, Tree, Avatar, like you know, um, Spider Man, uh, Amazing Spider Man uh, Two. I think seeing that in three D as well. Like so. 
Yeah, it was the same as you. I thought it was going to be a, a reoccurring thing, and it's going the to way things were now. I thought that was the new. Yeah, but now it seems to be normal. more like um, 4K or 6KX or whatever these things in America, 4DX or something, where they like splash water and the pump smells into the into the theater when you're watching it. Or some <laughs> shit. They actually do, man. I swear to God, and they have. Really? You're, yeah. I thought you were joking. No, I swear to God, they're called 4 DX cinemas, right? And in like literally in in the entire movie walls or the the or the whole cinema, like they actually shoot extra footage so you can see actually the entire angle of the shot. It's like it's all around you. I think, and you're in these like weird like chairs, and they like the water splashes on you, and the pump smells like so. If certain smells are in the movie. They'll put that in the cinema to create this like immersive experience, and that's kind of what's taking the place of 3D is that it's kind of this immersive experience. And what's really, really going to take the place of 3D is probably maybe going to see virtual reality movies where it's like you're actually in the movie, you know, that kind of thing. That might happen. That'd be probably a fad that'll die off. But like, maybe that was the case with Texas Chainsaw 3D that it just kind of died off with the fad. And maybe that's what it kind of got attached to, that kind of thing, like the cheesiness of it. And that's why it never got carried forward. And that's why they went with a bit more grounded effect with like, Leather face or something, but one thing I always love, like when I watch uh, like uh, Friday 13 3D, or when we just talk about like uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D, that when you watch this movie on a 2D TV and you see all the shitty attempts that they've made to try to make it more immersive, where they're like shoving this shovel towards the camera and shit like that, like you know what I mean? Like, like that's one of my favorite things about 3D movie watching 2D is you see the shitty attempts that they had did to try to get the 3D effect over to the camera, you know. Oh God! And that was it. And now you look at this, and everything about everything that was 3D it seems to be kind of like swept under the, the rug. Uh, swept under the carpet. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I'm wondering if this film is the same, even though it wasn't like a great film by any stretch. It gave you yeah. somewhere to go. Mm. Um, uh, no doubt. You know, and it could have yeah, it could have tied into Letterface, but yeah. now I think with the 2022, it's so undeniably completely out of sync with anything that's come previously. Yeah. But if they were to forward the property, that they'd have to do it on a completely new basis. Because yeah. I don't even think, I think I think the 2022 entry is so bad that it ruins the previous entries and it's not good enough to carry forward. So yeah. it's yet another revamp. And I think it might have just done to the series what Freddy Krueger 2010 did. Yeah. It just put it back in the ground. And it's going to be X amount of years before it can come back. 12 years and counting. Mm. And there's still no sign of it. I think what we're going to see is a trilogy. Um, I think there's going to be two more movies made by Netflix. Uh, This did pretty well in in parts. A lot of people enjoyed the gore. Um, I thought the gore was hilarious. I think we're actually going to see another couple of movies very quickly, like Halloween. Like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another Texas Chainsaw Massacre next year or the year after and another one the year after that because the further and further you get away from the original movie, Leatherface is going to be like eight years old. So if they want to keep incorporating the original timeline, they're going to have to make these movies quick and fast. And it's the same thing Halloween realized that we're going to have to base it all on the same night and it's going to have to make them like, if it wasn't for the pandemic, like Halloween ends would have been out last year probably because Halloween Kills wouldn't have been out the year before. You know what I mean? So... I think they're going to go thick and fast with these, and um, I, I think we'll see three more or two more uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, and then we might see it go dormant, and then we probably see another prequel or reboot again because they can't help yeah. themselves. But um, out of the three movies, I think it's for sure the weakest, um, and it made less sense out of the three of them, even though the Alexandria Daddario one's a big fucking insane times, and out of the three of them, probably the best movies, probably the Leatherface one in terms of quality. Because it has that standalone aspect, so it, it's less beholden to a timeline because it's a prequel. But in terms like of the things to trade and the red herring with the big dude and pretending he was going to be Leatherface and having the other guy be Leatherface and have him kill the love interest and all these kind of different aspects that you normally don't see in a horror movie. I think it's definitely the best out of three. And it was the probably the best attempt at revitalizing the franchise because you could have easily carried forward in that timeline and you're not beholden to the original in the same way the, the other two are. I don't know if anything ever felt beholden to anything. I think it kind of became a very, so much of a clusterfuck at a certain point that now it's either making money or it's not. Yeah, no, I think it means... And like you said, I, I, the new I, one made money. Yeah, oh no, I just meant it's beholden in terms of the timeline because it incorporated into its timeline. Well, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, at least there's something that they're trying to keep with the timeline. But I think the timeline kind of, for me, either 
uh, it doesn't matter or or is very hard to follow. And I'm not sure which one is which because now Letterface has jumped from family to family to family and got younger. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. So at this point, I think I'll just watch it because I'm a sucker. Yeah, no, I just think that like out of three of my um because Letterface was a prequel, that it's not beholden to the 50 year gap from the original to the sequels in the same way that the Alexandre Daddario's one was a requel to the original and uh, the new one was a requel to the original. That Letterface is going to be like in his 70s or 60s. So I think the Letterface is the, the best way to do it right now would have been a prequel and build off that because you have a young Letterface again and he can make more movies in the back of that. He's no longer 70 years old. And I think that's the smartest uh, way to do it. And I think that's what I would have done. He could, as I said, he could have easily incorporated the Alexander the Dario movie and the prequel and gone from there because he's still so young. But Letterface would be old then. That's the only problem. So I think the best thing he could have done is make a sequel to Letterface, the prequel from 2017, keep a young yes. Letterface, and he can keep more on forward with a 30-odd-year-old Letterface. Yeah. And he can make four or five movies in the back of that. But Especially with an actor like a Letterface that we've actually got to know on a human level. Yeah. Before he became an unhuman monster or whatever. Yeah, I'd recast um, him with a bigger dude. Oh, yeah, recast him with a bigger dude. But the fact that we've got someone in mind, you know, that yeah. kind of way, the yeah. fact that we've we just know seen his this... motives kind of what happened to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or we know how he became so broken. Yeah. Um, but... I actually really enjoyed that movie, I have to say. Yeah, I think um, the prequel from 2006 was probably a better prequel than the one from 2017. But like 2017 is definitely the best of the three movies we're talking about now because it's, as I said, it's not beholden to the original, but like it's also, it was, it tried different things in in the ways that part, uh, or sorry, the ways the Texas Chainsaw 3D and the way the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, they didn't really try a lot of new things. They tried to rehash things and like that fucking chainsaw, as you said, is magical in 2022. Like the fucking things he does with that thing. Like it could be, it seems to operate in any way he wants it to operate. Like in oh, terms yeah. you know, of his capabilities, like it makes no sense. Um, but like 50 like, years old can cut through steel. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, it's just. Yeah. Like, and he's like, I don't know. I just think the new movie was over the top even though I enjoyed the gore um, none of the characters all of the characters to me felt like they were from like a really shitty kind of 1980s horror where you didn't give a fuck about any of them and they were just there to be cannon fodder and like in like Jessica Biel played a f- good final girl Jordana Brewster played a good final girl um, uh, Alexandra Daddario played a good final girl and she became the villain and I just think that the strength of these movies in particular are based on the final girl because like the one that we thought was the most forgettable was probably Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. We can't even remember who the fu- played the final girl. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4 is better because Renée Zellweger was the, a good final girl and Stretch was Do a good, understand. you know what I mean? Like, so Stretch was a good final girl in part two and then you had Sally in part one. Like So of all the movies, the only weak one that really had a, a no real strong final girl because the other face is more prequel so there's no real final girl in that is the, the third one and the one from 2022. And I think that's the issue with all these movies that if you look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre as a whole and entire franchise, apart from Leatherface having to be ferocious and apart from his manic mouthpiece having to not overshadow him, the most important thing about Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a strong final girl. And 2022 made the same mistake as the one part three made and had a weak ass final girl and we didn't give a fuck about any of the group and that's why, you, in my opinion, it's probably the second weakest out of all of them. No, it's probably not. When the anyone weakest. survived that movie was the was like a, definitely a point against it. Yeah, exactly. Like you know what I mean. So I just think that they didn't make us give a fuck in the same way as the previous movies did because we really cared about Jessica Biel's character, um, Aaron. We really cared about Jordana Bruce's character. We cared about uh, Alexander Daddario's character. We even cared we about did, Le- yeah. we even cared about Letterface in the prequel. It just like, until he became Letterface, like so. Like I just think that this didn't make us connect with its main cast in the same way as all the, the other ones, maybe apart from part three. It's just that I think it really shows that in horror movies without a strong final girl, you're kind of fucked. And it proves once again, when you look throughout these nine movies, the two weakest of the bunch are the ones with the weakest final girls. Yeah, I agree, actually. Yeah, I think it's yeah, absolutely simply, but it's something that you're so synonymous with well, with horror in general, but mm. it's also very synonymous with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And uh, this one just introduced a load of kind of, I don't know, spoiled city kids or something. Yeah. 
you know, not, none work. of them really stamp themselves as. Yeah, like, and I think they're maybe taught, like, we go with the red herring because the girl with the curly hair was supposed to be like the, the final girl, but it ended up being her sister. Like, stuff which like I've seen coming. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're telling me there's one character here that's actually had some sort of personal torment in her life. You're telling me she's not actually the final girl? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll play along. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? like, yeah, so, I'll say along. Yeah, 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 yeah no, it's yeah. always been so smart. But uh, yeah, so before we get the fuck out here, Noel, um, what do you make of? Do you do you think now we're going as you touched upon it? Do you think they're going to put Texas and Samasco back on the shelf, or are we going to see more? I think we're going to see at least two more. I, I think we're going to say more, see more because it's now a Netflix property and <laughs> it's a bed money, a bed money. Yeah, you it's know what of, I mean. Like ultimately. Yeah, and you see now, like a lot of these streaming services seem to be making a real push to put new horror content on their, their, uh, on their platforms because everyone's been calling for it. Does that whole meme put better horrors on Netflix? So I think you're going to see that now that people realize the most fervent fan base, probably of all, is the horror fan base. And you're going to start seeing more and more horror uh, content on these streaming services. And I think we'll probably see two more Texas Chainsaw Massacres in this timeline because, as I said, fucking Leatherface is going to be 90 if they fucking keep stalling, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know God, I mean? I mean, he's... Oh, he's there's only so long that he can stay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He'll just be called Face Face. <laughs> but one thing I'll give this props for, the visuals in the 2022 movie were cool. And Fede Alvarez can do good visuals. I really like that scene. And we've got to see it in some of the other ones, kind of like that iconic scene where Leatherface holds up his new face. And I really like that scene where he's in the cornfield and I think he takes his mother's face and he wears her face for the movie and he holds it up to the sky and you can see the, sh- the sun shining through it and shit like that. So visually, this movie had a lot going on for it, but in terms of narrative, it was weak as fuck and I'm very surprised considering the strength of Evil Dead like from 2013. Yeah, it was it was piss poor and that's all you can really say about it. Yeah. You know, it's not to go after anybody, but I mean, a p- it was a piss poor film. Yeah, it was a weak ass motherfucker. Um, so Noel, do you have anything else to say? Do you think it's going to be so? What do you think? Do you think we're going to see a new TCM trilogy like we got to see with Halloween? Yeah, yes, we are. And I'm, I'm hoping. I suppose the optimist in me just hopes that he takes Optimus on board. Prime. The optimist, for, yeah, <laughs> that he takes on board like the criticisms that he's going to rightfully get from this. So, yeah. Uh, uh, though if this he still has to work off the foundation he's been given, and the foundation he's been given is a very much so off the leash. Nobody left to turn to uh, Leatherface and see what he does with that. But uh, at the same time, I'm not particularly optimistic. But it made money, and if people yeah. will watch it, yeah, if people will watch it, then they're gonna then they're gonna make it. That's all there is to Netflix. They're, before, like, before, they, they have some great properties, but before I let you out here, um. What, what direction do you think they're going to go? Do you think they're just going to do canon fodder horror where they're just going to keep throwing new groups and not give us a storyline the way Halloween have? Honestly, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the survivor of that film like comes back and like, but I promise you, he was right here. Yeah. So, you know, cleaned up and then like they like they, they just try to like discover shit and they end up just killing another bunch of them. I, I think it might be as simple as that. Do you think she's really going to be the, the running final girl for the trilogy? She's probably going to be the run and file girl for the trilogy. Yeah, she's kind of nondescript and kind of, you know, soft and likable in that kind of way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she is. She's kind of, and she's broken now. She watched her sister get decapitated, which gives her a personal kind of revenge line yeah. against Leatherface. So yeah, what, why not just go with it, basically? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'll probably just continue ripping off. The next one's going to probably be called uh, Text Chains and Massacre Kills. Um, like you know, it's just gonna be it's the most blatant ripoff I've seen in a long time. But like apart from that, visually cool, the deaths are cool. We're probably gonna see two more. And um, I couldn't really give a fuck what way to go about, but I can see probably a lot of cannon fodder horror and a lack of storyline. Cause like if you know it start as you mean to go on, and if they've started how they mean to go on, I have a feeling we're gonna see very little storyline and a shit ton of killing. I'm there for it, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We're a su- we're a sucker of a people. So <laughs> yeah. So all right, Noel, it's been a long one, and we get the fuck out of here. Um. So do you have anything else you want to say? We just leave. We just go. Um. All right, folks. That was the base of Polly Snatch. I'm your host, Winter Green. I'm your host, Nolton Tui. And that was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All of it. All nine, ep- all nine movies. Over three episodes. 
I hope you've been here for all of it. If not, we don't blame you. It's been long. So we'll see you yeah, next time, folks. Absolutely. Peace. Thanks, folks. Peace. Peace.